TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Today on How TV. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I am Imam Ridwanullahi Jami, Chief Imam Lekin Setrambosk. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. This Ramadan reminder, we want to talk today about the importance of dua and its manners in Islam. Dua means invocation, calling on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves to be called upon. When you call upon Allah, you raise up your hands, for example, to Allah. You are demonstrating your belief in all the names and attributes of Allah. When you raise up your hands to Allah, calling on Him, as if you are saying, Oh Allah, I believe you are Allah. I believe you are Ar Rahman, the merciful Lord. I believe you are Al Ghani, the rich. I believe that you are Al Qadim, the all powerful that can do and grant my request. You are demonstrating your belief that Allah is a Samir, the all-hearing. He hears your voice. You are demonstrating your belief that Allah is al basir the whole-seeing. He sees everything. You are demonstrating your belief that Allah is Al-Alim, the all-knowing. Each time you raise up your hands to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are demonstrating that you believe in all the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why Dua is one of the most cherished Acts of worship in the, in the sight of Allah, we should always call upon our Lord. Allah loves that we call upon Him. In prosperity and in adversity, in prosperity you call upon Him, thanking Him for what He has done for you, asking Him to preserve you and preserve the uh, graces He has granted to you, and in adversity you call on Him to remove your problems. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu said, Man lam yas'alillah yaqdubu alayhi. Allah gets angry with whoever does not call upon him. Anyone who does not call on Allah, Allah gets angry with him. Then some people may not call on Allah because of a belief that everything has been written. But it's Allah who tells us that he has written everything, who has also commanded us to call upon him. Will Allah be contradicting himself? Allah says, وَقَوْلَ رَبُّكُمْ وَدِعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ Your Lord says, call upon me and I will answer your call. I will answer your request. Allah is saying that you should call upon him. How will he be contradicting himself if he knows that the eyes of no effect? Why will he ask us to be calling upon him? What you must know about dua is this. Dua is part of qadr. But qadr, destiny, is of two types. There is qadr that is absolute. You can't have any influence on it. Like your gender, whether you are a male or a female. You say qadr, you can't have any influence on it. Your nationality. You are Nigerian, for example. You are black. All these, your items, in most cases, these you may not have influence on them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed them absolutely. But there is another aspect of qadr, which is conditional. That is al qadr al muallak It's conditional, is based upon the nature, the law of nature, of uh, action and effect. That is cause and effect. If you do it this way, is coming out this way. If you do it the other way, it's coming out the other way. They say whatever goes round, comes round. There are some aspects of life. There are some things that you can never attain in life unless by calling on Allah. We have seen, we have heard of some patients who are bedridden. When in the hospital, they have applied all forms of medication that they could lay their hands upon. Yet, they were never healed. 
they were only healed not only through medication but through supplication it's only through supplication that they were healed i'm not saying that we should underrate the impact of medication on life but we are saying that medication is only a means it's like taking food but to make it work to work lies in the hand of allah that allah in whose hand lies the effect of medication you can also call on him directly making supplication to him and he will also grant you a request TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Uh, what does uh, Islam teach us about, uh, I mean, it puts people into difficult situations at times. So what does Islam teach us uh, uh, about these uh, situations, tough, tough, tough situations, situations? in life, okay. Um, it's actually very powerful. When we declare Allah not just our creator, mm -hmm. uh, we declare him our master. The Arabic word is Rabb. Rab. The word Rabb in Arabic has many connotations, mm -hmm. and I'd like to give you a list of them. The first connotation is master, we already talked about that. Right. Then there is uh, the one who has complete authority over you. Mm -hmm. The authority. Al uh, Sayyid, they say in Arabic. Then he's the one who has complete ownership over you as well. And this is important just in, in brief because it's possible for you to own something but not have complete authority over it. That's like right. your car. Mm -hmm. You own it but you can't make any modifications you want. There are, there are requirements by the state or mm -hmm. whatever else, right? Mm -hmm. Or you can't drive it however fast you want and you still have to get insurance or inspections and all of that stuff. So you have ownership but not authority. Mm -hmm. But a master is one who has ownership and has authority, authority together at the same time. Okay. Additionally, it's wal munaim, the grantor of gifts. Mm -hmm. Now this is important. A master when he gives something to his slave, mm -hmm. it's not considered compensation. An employer, an employer when he gives to the employee, it's my paycheck. Right. I deserve it, and if I don't get it, I have a right to complain. Mm -hmm. But when the master gives to the slave, then that is considered actually a gift. A gift. A gift. So my creed as a Muslim is that whatever I have in this life is a gift. Mm -hmm. And whatever I don't have or whatever is taken away from me wasn't mine to begin with. Mm -hmm. Now the thing is, the thing between a gift and compensation, or paycheck, is a gift is something you don't deserve. So mm -hmm. if you don't get it, you can't complain. Because mm -hmm. it wasn't something you were worthy of to begin with, it's given in addition to what you are owed. owed. If it's owed to you, it's not a gift. Mm -hmm. It's compensation. It's a compensation. Right? So we believe everything we have in this world is compensation. So my master decided to give me two functioning hands. Mm -hmm. These are two gifts of his. Okay. If I only had one... You can't complain. I can't because it wasn't mine to begin with. Mm -hmm. And actually, we go, we take this to the nth degree, the Muslim takes this to the nth degree, when somebody dies, you know what we say to each other? We say, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. It is no doubt we belong to Allah, and to Him we have to be returned. Return. What am I going to speak about my hand for, or my clothes, or my, or, or, or my health, or my children, my family, my car, my house, my job, when I myself am the property of Allah, I myself yes. belong to Him. Mm -hmm. So whatever is taken away from me, wasn't mine to begin with. And my teacher... The, the psychology of this is very powerful. My teacher explained it to me in this way. Human beings, you know, when their faith is weak mm -hmm. in the master, really mm -hmm. being master, right? What happens, it's kind of like the parent and the child, right? The, the um, parent mm -hmm. uh, says to the child, is, the parent's about to eat some ice cream. And the child says, Dad, can I have some? Little kid, mm -hmm. can I have some? And that says, no, you can't have any. Can I have some? Okay, you can only have two bites. Hold on to this for a second. Just mm -hmm. have two bites and give it back to me. Mm -hmm. The child takes it, takes two bites, two licks. The parent says, can I have it back? What does the child say? No. Mine. <laughs> this is mine. You forget. Yeah. Now, the Lord gives, he gives, he gives, he gives, and then he takes away. And when he takes away, what do people start complaining? Yeah. This was mine. Mm -hmm. This was mine. Mm -hmm. But the Muslim has to internalize, as, as the fundamental part of his creed, it's not his to begin with. Yeah. 
So whenever problems happen, and if you keep that at the forefront of your mind, the Quran says, لِكَيْلَا تَأْسَوْ عَلَى مَا فَاتَكُمْ وَلَا تَفْرَحُوا بِمَا آتَاكُمْ So you may not grieve over things you lose, mm-hmm. and you, not, you may not become overjoyed over things you gain, because you know all of these are a gift, and all of these gifts are temporary, because you yourself are temporary, you belong to Allah as well. Muslim Lifestyle Channel You can ask the Muslims So I'll be asking you three very simple questions And if you get them right You stand a chance of going home with gifts Courtesy of Arabel and courtesy of African Alliance Insurance PLC So are you ready ma? Yes I'm ready Are you ready ma? Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I'm ready. Which special month is mentioned in the Holy Quran? Okay. Uh, the month of Ramadan. Final answer. The month of Ramadan. There are prices involved. Final answer. In which the Holy Quran was revealed. Yes, it was revealed. Yes. And the last, you are very sure. You are correct. The month of Ramadan. How many surahs are known as the Makan surahs? Surahs revealed in Mecca. How many of them? Uh, that would be... in Mecca. Final answer. Give me options. Option A, 50. Option B, 86. Option C, 82. Option D, 28. 86 plus 28. 86. Final answer. 86. You're right, 86. Which letter is used most frequently in the Holy Quran? Which letter is used most frequently in the Holy Quran? Fatiat. Should I give you options? Should I give you options? Which letter is used? Option A, Alif. Option B, Nun. Option C, Yao. Option D, Za. Which of them is used most, most, more frequently in the Holy Quran? Alif. Final answer? Alif. You are right. Alif was correct. It's used most frequently in the Holy Quran. How many years were the Madani surahs revealed? The surahs revealed in Medina, how many years? In how many years were they revealed? Option. Options. Option A, 23. Option B, 13. Option C, 10. Option D, 42. 10. Final answer? Yes. You are right. 10. The Madani surahs were revealed within the range of 10 years. Which surah is also the name of a gazwa of the Prophet? Mm, Which surah is also the name of a gazwa of the Prophet? Option A, Sotul Azab. Option B, Sotul Ankabut. Option C, Sotul Anfal. Option D, Sotul Anam. Suratul Azab. Final answer. Suratul Azab. You are correct. Sotul Azab was the right answer. How many surahs were revealed in Medina? 28 surahs. Final answer? Yes. You are correct. 28 surahs. In which surah is the name of Allah repeated in every verse? I have my options here. Do I, let, me give them, let me give you my options. 
In every verse. It is not in all the verses. Yes. Okay, let me give you my options. Option A, Satu Rahman. Option B, Satu Mujadila. Option C, Satu Al Falak. Option D, Satu Nas. Suratu Rahman. Final answer. Suratu Rahman. Sorry, you were wrong. You were Satu Mujadila. Allah's name was repeated in every verse. What is the best night mentioned in the Holy Quran? A night of majesty. Final answer. Night of majesty. You are right. Night of majesty. Lord, to How many surahs are in the 30th juzu of the Holy Quran? How many surahs are in the 30th part or the 30th juzu of the Holy Quran? Option. Option A, 31. Option B, 42. Option C, 35. Option D, 37. D. Option D is what? 37. Final answer? Yes. What's your answer? 37. 37. You are right. 37 surahs are in the 30 Jews of the Holy Quran. Now your final question. Which surah condemns the backbiters? Can I hear the option? Option A, Sato Taharim. Option B, Sato Lahab. Option C, Sato Mahun. Option D, Sato Maza. Sato Mahun. Satsul Mahun. Final answer? Suratul Mahun. You were wrong. It was Suratul Maza. So you have, you got two over three, so. Now your last question. Which surah of the Ulu Quran is called Arusul Quran? Arusul Quran. Options. Option A, Satsul Nisa. Option B, Satsul Nur. Option C, Satsul Azab. Option D, Satsul Rahman. Give me the option again. Option A, Satu Nisa, uh, Arusul Quran. Uh, Which surah is called the Arusul Quran? What That's a question. Arusul Quran. Okay. Option A, Satu Nisa. Option B, Satu Nur. Option C, Satu Azab. Option D, Satu Rahman. I'm not sure, but maybe Satu Rahman. Final answer. If you get this question right, you're going home with two gifts. Final answer? Yes. Ah, let me give you a chance to think again. Final answer. Nisan is for woman. Yes, Surat Raman. Surat Raman, you were right. It was correct. So you have all, you got all three questions. So you are going to hold it. Gift items, courtesy of Arabel and African National Insurance PLC. Which surah of the Holy Quran was revealed twice? Which surah of the Holy Quran was revealed twice? Fatia. Final answer? Yes. You're right, surah of Fatia. And you got all my questions correctly, so you stand a chance on your going home with gift, courtesy of Arabel and African Alliance Insurance PLC. Which surah of the Holy Quran is called the mother of the Quran? Fatia. Final answer. Suratul Fatia. You're right. Suratul Fatia. So you got all three questions correct, ma. So you're going home with gift courtesy of Arabel and African Alliance Insurance PLC. What one thing disliked by Allah, it is halal, I mentioned in the Quran. What is it? It is halal, but it is disliked by Allah. What is it? It's halal. But it is disliked by Allah. I mentioned it, and it's halal. It's not haram. Options. Option A, divorce. Option B, backbiting. Option C. Okay, let's just give two options. Option A, divorce. Option C, option B, backbiting. Dif uh, divorce. Are you sure? Yes, divorce. Final answer. Divorce. You were right. It's divorce. It is disliked by Allah, but it is halal. I mentioned the Holy Quran. <laughs> Okay, Ma, thank you very much for answering all my questions correctly. On behalf of Arabel and African Alliance Insurance PLC, I give you these gifts. They say, Jazakallah. Thank you very, very much. So, one word for the sponsors. May Almighty Allah grant them 
uh, fortitude to finish this Ramadan in peace. Jazakumullah uh, Khairan. May God continue to bless you. Thank you very much for coming. Jazakumullah uh, Khairan. May Almighty Allah be with you in your, in your endeavors and everything you are doing. And I wish you as Jonah Fidels. I mean, thank you very much. So, on behalf of African Alliance Insurance PLC, we say Jazakumullah Khairan for coming. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank you. Hal TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel. Join us again tomorrow for more. It's a mistake to believe that you can never call on Allah, except through some people. Don't make that mistake. And Allah says, call on me. You must not call on any other being besides Allah. When you call on the, on the jinns, or you are calling the angels, or you are calling the malaika, the angels, or you are calling the prophets, or you are calling the saints, or some sheikhs, when you do that, you are no longer a Muslim. We thank God, Alhamdulillah. And then everything is where we are just fine for God's hand by the grace. Do you understand my question? What's my question? Uh, your question just uh, how we did inside passing. So that's my, my question is, what was the first thing? Waiting Allah create first. The God will create us. Waiting you first create. For passing, I'll be for... TV, your Muslim lifestyle channel.